Hi everyone, like Mark said, I am Sydney Holder and I am currently a data scientist at AT&T and today I'm going to tell you about my story. So first I'll give you a little bit of background about me to where I'm at today. I grew up in Philadelphia and I liked the North but I decided for college I wanted to go and try something different. So I was like, okay, let's try Texas, it's a little bit warmer. I didn't know it would be this much warmer. <laughs> but. I still really love it, and I am staying here as long as I can. So once I moved to Texas, I started at SMU undergrad in 2018, and my first major I picked up was applied math. I loved it. I thought that was like what I wanted to do, math. But then someone, I don't even know who, told me, why don't you try data science? We're actually offering an intro to data science course um, next semester. This was my freshman year. So I was like, eh, I don't really know what that is, but sure, I guess. I'll give it. it we'll get just credits out of the way. But I found that I fell in love with something new again. <laughs> I loved data science. And from there, I knew I wanted to go into something like that. So by the time I graduated, I ended up having a triple major in applied math, statistics, and data science. And that fed me right into the data science scholar program, which seriously was life changing for me. This program really helped me develop skills to be on stage even, and also some technical skills that I use in work. And now I'm also pursuing a master's of data science at SMU, which I'll soon be finished and it'll be nice a little bit to get out of school. But early on, especially in my younger years, there's something that I wasn't telling some of my friends that I met in class. And I was keeping a secret because I was scared that people were going to judge me or they would look at me differently or maybe they wouldn't want me to study with them or they wouldn't allow me in the group project. And so what I wasn't telling everyone was I was actually also on the cheer team at SMU. <laughs> and I absolutely loved it. Everything I learned in cheerleading, I swear, has transferred. Maybe I don't do any flips anymore. But the leadership skills, the hard work, the tough times when you're getting yelled at, like all of those things that I learned in cheer has transferred. However, there has been a stereotype I've noticed around cheerleading. Maybe it's from the movies and from people just in society. And you know, I've definitely heard a few times, oh, you're studying math and you're a cheerleader? You must be a smart cheerleader. I'm like, uh. <laughs> Was I not smart like when I was just a cheerleader? <laughs> and so it really made me think. And for a lot of my life, it was hard for me to let these two personas combine. I felt like when I was with my cheer friends on the football field, I had to act a certain way and be social and wave and you know say the cheers. But then in class, I'm really nerdy, I'll admit it. Like, I listen to podcasts about AI, watch YouTube videos, you name it, and I'm probably like listening to something I can learn. I just have always loved to learn. But I kept these two people separate. And really what changed that for me was joining the CDO. This is where I realized I can combine like those two people. And everyone celebrates it. We all have different talents and abilities in the CDO, the chief data office at AT&T but use those to help support the customers of AT&T and help create technologies to further the company. So thinking back on all this, I realized it was hard for me to admit to myself like, oh, I was limiting myself by saying, oh, I can only be nerdy with these people and I can only be social with these people. But that's not true. I was allowing that to limit the story of my life. And what I realized, it's better to create generative stories in the name of generative AI, generate new stories about yourself and who you want to be. So what I realized, I could generate new stories about who I want to be, what I'm capable of, and where I want to go in life. So the first way I saw that I was limiting my life is I was the type of person who went with the crowd. And I just wanted to like fit in. I didn't want people to think I'm weird or, you know, oh, what's wrong with that girl? <laughs> like, I was always scared of being judged. And that really held me back from being myself around everyone. I felt like I had to fit in, and I really didn't feel like I fit in because I was trying so hard to fit in. But what I realize now, I now embrace my uniqueness. Especially at work, I've learned, like, everyone has their purpose. Everyone is 
going and doing something for the greater good. And we're all doing that in a different way, and that's totally okay. I'm definitely an introvert and shy, but you know, I can still make contributions just as much as someone who's more outspoken than me. The next way I realized I was limiting myself is I was the type of person that took the path of least resistance. And don't get me wrong, like efficiency is good, but I know, and to the students in the audience, when I was in college, if ChatGPT was a thing, I would have been using it on every assignment. I mean, I think it's cheating, so don't do that. But I would have been using it for everything. Homework, essays, you name it, I probably would have tried it. But what I realized is, you know, why are you using the tool? Are you using ChatGPT as a cheat sheet or as a tutor? You know, use it to help you. Don't just copy and paste. Understand why you're doing that. So in the beginning of the summer, I realized that, you know, how can I use ChatGPT to help me learn. So I now realize I want to challenge myself to innovate. My team, we were talking about a problem that we were having and you know how we could make it better. And I was like, okay, let me see on ChatGPT. I was like, oh man, like ChatGPT is not helping with this. So I was like, why be limited by ChatGPT? I don't want to be defined by the tool. Let's create something new. So I created a new product around ChatGPT and it's a new tool for operations and support across AT&T. It enables people to do things that wasn't possible before with ChatGPT. And had I just depended on ChatGPT or waited for someone else to do that, then I would have just been limited. So I challenge you also to see how you can innovate in your life. The last way I kind of saw that I was limiting myself was I was always scared to speak up. I am definitely shy. I'm shy and nervous and anxious, you name it, it's probably me. I was just joking earlier. I used to be scared to join like Teams calls and like say hi to people. Like I would like practice like, hi, my name is Sydney. Like, and it was funny, but especially in things like this, when they asked me to come on stage, I was like, oh, I'm shy, I'm new, I don't know about this. But what I realized is like I was letting that limit me. I may be shy, uh, it might be new to AT&T as well, but that shouldn't stop me from going for this. I'm not gonna grow without trying something new. You know what, what if it went bad? Then I'll laugh about it, maybe in a year, not next week, in the year, so. But what I realized is I have to accept being uncomfortable. What I mean by that is like, as humans, we seek comfort. But once you get comfortable being uncomfortable, that's really where you learn to grow. Just like we resistance train and train our muscles to get stronger, in life, we need to do that. We need challenges in life, or else, you know, we might be stuck in the same spot. So, one of my favorite quotes growing up is, whether you think you can, or you think you can't, you're right, from Henry Ford. I thought this perfectly summed up everything I was thinking, because our mind is really everything. What we believe we are is what we become, and I realized when I was telling these limiting stories about myself, I wasn't allowing myself to grow when I was telling myself I had to fit in to one stereotype. I wasn't allowing myself to grow into my own confident self. So today, I challenge you to think of what your story is. Are you telling yourself limiting stories or generative ones? And I challenge you to generate new ones starting today. Thank you. Well, thanks, Sydney.